Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about a very recent discovery or a very unusual star system that beats a lot of records and uh, creates an opportunity for us to study gravitational waves in more detail in the future. Let's talk about this new system and welcome to What The Math. So what you're looking at right here is one of the more famous objects, one of the closest objects to our solar system. This is Sirius D. Sirius system is um, a star system that's very bright in the night skies. You can see it pretty much from everywhere in the world. And uh, for the most part, uh, most people don't realize that it's actually two different stars. The brighter star is Sirius A right there, but the much more dim partner that it has, known as Sirius B, is actually a white dwarf and white dwarf um, is a type of a stellar remnant or a star that used to be a much larger star but now is a tiny tiny core of that star uh, that our sun is going to become um, as well so our sun is going to be very similar to this but in a very recent discovery of a paper that was just published in nature magazine these scientists discovered a very strange very unusual and very exciting binary star where both stars are white dwarfs but it just so happens that they're so close to one another that they're most likely producing a lot of gravitational waves that we're going to be able to detect with future um, detectors. Now, right now, the most famous detector is the LIGO detector that was responsible for discovering gravitational waves coming from black holes and neutron stars. But it's not really that strong yet to be able to detect the gravitational waves from two white dwarfs. But we believe that with upgrades and also with an installation of what's known as LISA, that's going to be a space antenna that's going to improve all of this detection, uh, we're, we'll be able to see this and we'll be able to detect these gravitational waves as well. But what exactly did these scientists discover? Well, what they discovered is uh, basically um, an eclipse in binary. That's when a star that you can kind of see right there, it's very, very difficult to see because that's sort of what they were looking at, starts blinking. And here the blinks were very periodic and were also very fast. In other words, the two stars that were orbiting here were doing so very, very quickly. And that's because these two stars were actually orbiting around one another exceptionally fast. The single orbit here takes roughly around 6.9 minutes or 6.91 minutes if you want to be super precise. And that means that in these 6.9 minutes, that's what you see. You see uh, an actual star orbiting around the other star and most likely also losing a lot of matter that we were able to recreate here in the Universe Sandbox. So these unusual uh, binaries are not really uncommon, but having such a quick binary or such a quick orbital period is very, very strange. And also basically now there is a record holder for the fastest orbital period as well. And also for the fastest orbital speed with the less massive star that's actually bigger than the other star moving at close to about thousand kilometers per second or actually over thousand kilometers per second when they're in the closest part of their orbit. Now, these two stars are both white dwarfs, meaning that um, back maybe billions of years ago, these two stars were very similar to our sun, and they were partners, and they were orbiting around one another, eventually losing their shell and becoming these cores that we know as white dwarfs. This star that's bigger is about 20% the mass of our sun, and with white dwarfs, the more massive the white dwarf, the smaller in size it gets. So this here is a little bit larger, it's about 60% the mass of the sun, and it's actually what our sun is going to become eventually as well. It's going to be very similar to this star. And these two objects um, have a name that's sort of difficult to say, but it's ZTF G5039 plus 5027. The um, larger or the more massive star, as you can see right here, is actually absorbing the mass very slowly and is collecting around itself. Uh, and the mass is coming from its partner. So basically, because of the tidal interactions, when they're closer to each other, it sort of steals some of the mass. And eventually, this mass uh, theft is going to increase even more, even more dramatically, where um, possibly within the next million or so years, the two stars will come close enough to each other to um, have two possible sort of interactions and two possible resolutions. One of these resolutions will create a single star, and that's uh, something that might happen if this mass transfer is not stable. In other words, if it happens in unpredictable sort of chunks. And so if the mass transfer is not stable, what's going to occur here is a single white dwarf 
that's a very rare white dwarf known as R. Corona Borealis variable. These are somewhat unusual white dwarf-like remnants that also have a strange property of dimming really unpredictably once in a while and then going back and brightens again. This is something that's not very periodic, this is something that happens for unknown reasons and we still don't really understand these remnants really well, we just know that they're the result of a merger between two white dwarfs and produce these super unpredictable uh, patterns that we still can't really explain very well. However, if this transfer is more stable, um, in other words, it's, if it's not really hectic, if the actual mass transfer is constant, at some point these two stars will separate a little bit, creating a very stable binary that's actually one of the weirdest stars that uh, you can find in Space Engine as well. And this is a type of a binary star known as AM Canum Venaticorum. Uh, these two stars are basically two remnants of white dwarfs, with one star constantly receiving matter from the other. In other words, it does look something like this, but a lot more complex with the actual mass transfer becoming almost like a stream of particles leaving the less massive object, arriving to the more massive object, and creating a sort of a very constant flow. And in some sense, this is maybe what it looks like, this is uh, from Space Engine, with two white dwarfs orbiting around one another close enough to have uh, an actual stream of particles that you can't really see here, it's very difficult to see, uh, but at the same time creating a lot of energy. As you can see, they're also, in this case, creating the um, astrophysical jets and um, a lot of uh, gravitational waves as well. In reality though, it's obviously a lot brighter than this uh, and it does look quite magnificent and um, has always created a lot of mysteries for the scientists. We still don't really understand what's really happening around these two white dwarfs um, as they transfer this energy and also how long they even last. And the way we discover these stars is because they also show this uh, unusual uh, variability and they do very periodically change brightness. So a very beautiful and very interesting system and um, this is kind of what the white dwarfs we've just discovered may become as well. However, for now we don't really know what its eventual fate will be because it still has quite a few thousands of years to go. As a matter of fact, it will take it approximately 130,000 years before they arrive at a distance that's close enough for them to start transferring mass uh, very constantly or very unpredictably. So it will be uh, at least 130,000 years before their orbit decreases to about 5 minutes from 6.9 uh, minutes and before we can officially start predicting what their fate will be. Obviously in 130,000 years, um, humans might not be around anymore, although you never know. We might actually persevere and become super star traveling race that might even get to visit these objects as well. But nevertheless, the discovery of these objects is very interesting because uh, this is something we don't really see very often, two stars so close together. Now how close is this? Well, remember, a single object like a white dwarf is only about the size of a planet like Earth. So this object is very similar to Earth. So altogether this orbit um, between them is comparable to an object like Jupiter in size or even, even smaller than that, even Saturn. So you can technically fit all of them into a gas giant. And these objects uh, together form a mass equivalent to almost the mass of the Sun. They're also slowly moving closer and closer towards each other at roughly around 26 centimeters per day. Uh, that's almost a foot per day. And um, what's really interesting here is that despite there being a lot of energy being produced through their interaction, we don't seem to see any X-rays or any other very powerful radiation being produced, which is unusual. We expected to see something like this. And one of the possible explanations is that, well, maybe the matter here accretes a lot slower or in much wider area, instead of creating a lot of ultraviolet and a lot of visual light instead of x-rays. So there is still some mysteries here, there's still a lot to discover and learn about these two objects, uh, but most importantly, there's actually a very high chance that in a few billion years from now, this is kind of what serious stars will become as well. It's quite possible that because the First, the larger star is already a white dwarf that's going to last for billions of years. The second star, that's currently very similar to our sun, Sirius A, will also turn into a white dwarf, eventually creating a white dwarf binary very, very close to our own uh, solar system. And that uh, binary is probably going to stay in our vicinity for a very long time. It will also generate a lot of energy and at some point might become catastrophic. So in a few billion years, serious stars might actually cause some sort of a danger to our system, but by then we don't really know if Earth is even going to be around anymore. 
And by the way, uh, this particular system is not really dangerous to us because it's really far away. It's almost 8,000 light years away from us, so uh, we have nothing to worry about even if it goes supernova. But anyway, on that note, that's really all I wanted to show you in this video. It's a pretty cool discovery of two very interesting white dwarfs orbiting really close to each other and producing these really unusual effects uh, that will one day cause them to become a single very unusual star uh, with strange variability or instead become two stars very similar to this right here the system of two white dwarfs that you can find in space engine if you look up am canon anyway on that note that's all i wanted to show you in this video uh, i hope you learn a little bit more about the universe and space in general and if you have enjoyed this video don't forget to subscribe share this with someone who loves learning about space come back tomorrow to learn something you may have not known before and maybe even consider supporting this channel on patreon because it does help me quite a lot I'll see you tomorrow. Space out, and as always, bye-bye.